different perspectives. Um, on one side is Toronto, a Native American who was stolen from his home by Englishmen. On the other side are the Pilgrims, who escaped who escaped from King James the first so that they would be able to believe in their own religion. These two different sides came together once in a time so long ago that only the rocks remember. Our story begins as Plymouth Rock, a huge boulder surrounded by a corpse. A tribe lived there called Wampanoag. The people of the dawn. <laughs> we planted corn, beans, squash, and pumpkins. We hunted deer and turkey and fished the sea and the freshwater streams. Every year we gave thanks for these gifts to Mother Earth at the Green Corn Dance, which lasted many days. In the early 1600s, Englishmen visited their shores. These men sailed in ships with butterfly wings, killed with guns, and kidnapped Wampanoag men for slaves. We became afraid of white men. One spring morning, we Englishmen sailed into the cove and tricked 17 of the Wampanoag men into our ship. Then we sailed away. I am Squanto. I was trapped on a ship and taken to New England. We sold the men to, into slavery. Squanto was sold to an Englishman, just like me. After many years of slavery in 1619, I was able to return home to my village, but my return was not jubilant. My village was deserted. All of my people were dead from the European plague. Squanto was full of grief. He finally joined another tribe nearby. Back in England, King James I demanded that everyone believe in the same religion or leave England. A group of people called the Puritans refused to obey. We believe we have the right to worship whomever we believe in. We called ourselves pilgrims. We fled to New World, America, which we believe to be full of savages. The Mayflower was the only ship that would be able to cross the ocean. On September 5th, 1620, 102 men, women, children, their furniture, hens, pigs, dogs, and nine cats crowded aboard the small ship. We were crowded below the deck, and we suffered terrible seasickness. On December 11, 1620, the Pilgrims and the Mayflower landed at Plymouth Rock. The Pilgrims finally had a home. But when, when winter, winter struck violently, the, the Pilgrims had to stop building their houses and live on the Mayflower. We huddled in blankets and layers and layers of clothes. We only had five kernels of Indian corn to eat a day. Eight pilgrims died in January, 17 in February, and 13 in March. When spring arrived, only 57 pilgrims had arrived. 17 were children. There were few of us left, but we worked hard to survive. We planted peas, wheat, and barley. We also scouted for Indians. But the pilgrims did not meet any savages. Then, one day when the birds were trilling and the leaves were swelling, we were shocked to see a tall, handsome Indian come striding into Plymouth. At first, we were scared, but then he raised his hand and said, Welcome, Englishman, he spoke English. He was friendly and dignified. Next week, the Indian returned with Squanto and the leader of the tribe. Squanto interpreted while the tribe leader and the Pilgrims created a peace treaty. Then I decided to stay at Plymouth. I could see that the Pilgrims did not know how to survive in the New World. They could barely catch enough fish for the colony, so I taught them how to fish with nets, and I took them to waters where cod and salmon were abundant. 
Then in late May, when the oak leaves were as big as his thumb, Squanto taught us to plant beans, corn, pumpkin, and squash, just like the Wampanoag tribe had done. Then he showed us, us the leaf nests of squirrels, the hideouts of skunks and raccoons, and the turkey that dwelled in his open forests. Squanto showed the pilgrims how to survive in the new world. He gave them tools they needed to live in this different land. Because of Squanto's help, the harvest of 1621 spelled bounties beyond the most hope-filled dreams of the pilgrims. Corn, beans, pumpkins, wheat, and barley spilled from baskets. Martyrs were stacked with dried venison, salmon, herring, cod, and duck. Racks of wild berries lay drying in the sun. The chickens laid eggs abundantly, and the cats grew fat on field mice. It was time to celebrate. The terrible winter was done. The suffering was past. The new governor, William Bradford, asked Squanto to invite a few of his friends to a feast. Bradford sent out men to shoot turkeys and ducks. The woman baked breads. Boards were set on barrels, covered with cloth, and placed in the middle of the only street in Plymouth. Opportunity. 